The Albatross is one of nature's most efficient examples of design engineering. A long wingspan stretching as much as 3.7 meters across enables it to glide on wind currents for thousands of kilometers whilst hardly flapping its wings. Albatross are slow breeders. They don't raise a chick until they're between seven and 10 years old. A pair will mate for life and produce just one egg at a time. These birds are able to live for 50 or 60 years in some of the harshest conditions on Earth. Yet, despite many natural adaptations, albatross are under grave threat. Of the 22 species of albatross, 15 are threatened with extinction. And one of the biggest threats to their survival is longline fishing. Albatross are fatally attracted to bait close to the surface of the water. They become hooked on lines and drown. Although only one or two birds might be killed on each trip, these numbers mount up when taken across an entire fishing fleet. In a single year, an estimated 100,000 albatross are killed in longline and trawl fisheries around the world. Given their slow breeding cycle, albatross populations are unable to keep up with this huge accidental loss. But all that could change, thanks to the introduction of new fishing practices that reduce seabird deaths. Global regulations require tuna and swordfish vessels to adopt these measures. Support to implement them is available from experts, such as BirdLife International's Albatross Task Force. Broadly, these regulations apply below 25 degrees south, the southern oceanic zones patrolled by albatross. Here, vessels are required to use at least two of three seabird bycatch mitigation measures. Tory lines, branch line waiting, and night setting. These measures enable boat captains to maintain their catches without harming the birds. The first measure is the Tory line, which has plastic streamers that trail from a high point near the stern of the vessel. A towed device at the seaward end of the line causes drag and creates the aerial extent of the Tory line, which acts as a scarecrow, keeping birds away from baited hooks. This aerial extent should stretch out at least 100 meters behind the vessel. Two Tory lines give better coverage of the line as it's deployed. Tory lines that combine long and short streamers are particularly effective. Brightly colored UV protected rubber tubing is one of the most effective options for use in Tory lines and attaching the streamers with lightweight swivels helps to reduce tangles. Adding weights to branch lines means hooks sink faster, reducing opportunities for birds to steal bait. The weight required depends on how close the weight is to the hook. For example, a weight of at least 45 grams should be placed within one meter of the hook. Importantly, branch line weighting close to the hook does not affect the catch. Fishermen have expressed concern about the possible dangers to crew if weighted lines fly back after shark bite-offs. Thankfully, there are several ways to prevent such accidents. One system uses sliding leads, such as Lumo leads. Another is the Yamazaki double weight system. This is the Yamazaki double weight system. 
which was invented by a Japanese fisherman called Yamazaki in 2010. He invented the system to help prevent seabird bycatch, but also to improve safety for the fishing crew. There were concerns that branch lines using just one weight might swing back to injure the fishermen, so Yamazaki invented this double weight system as a safety measure. I'd really like to commend Yamazaki-san for taking the initiative and coming up with a solution to the seabird bycatch issue and the thorny issue of line weighting. It just goes to show fishermen know their equipment, they know their gear, and they are best placed to know what's going to work in their vessels. I think what Yamazaki has done uh, needs to be followed by other fishermen as well and we can get uh, all fishing vessels using line weighting. Another key way to reduce seabird bycatch involves setting your lines at night when albatross are less likely to be following the boat. To be truly effective, night setting should start one hour after nautical dusk and be completed one hour before nautical dawn. Deck lighting should be kept to the minimum level required for crew safety. Conservation teams are available to work alongside crew on board fishing boats to help implement these bird-friendly measures. The practices recommended are simple, cost-effective and, importantly, will not reduce the catch. Adopting two of these measures is necessary to comply with the Regional Fisheries Management Organization's seabird conservation measures. But using all three at the same time will make an even greater difference. And by implementing them, you will become a key part of a global effort to protect some of the Earth's most magnificent species of seabirds.